With over two decades experience in implementing ERP and business management applications, we work with organisations across the UK to implement Acumatica cloud ERP software. Today, we're going to look at the reporting capabilities within the Acumatica application. We have a few different reporting tools, all included as standard within Acumatica. Firstly, we have the financial report writer. We would use this to create financial and project reports directly out of our general ledger. The types of reports that we would create using the financial report writer would typically be things like a balance sheet, profit and loss and cash flow type reports. The next type of reporting tool is the report designer. This would be what you would use to create and modify things like your invoices and sales order acknowledgements. This reporting tool also includes advanced formatting and display options, so you're able to add pictures and position data elements on the report. You can set up formatting templates as well so that any reports or forms that are created all have a consistent appearance. Lastly, we have the generic inquiry writer. This is a SQL query driven utility that allows you to pick and join tables using select conditions and choose the database fields that you want to display. You can also define the parameters that you want available to the users to enter at runtime. Now there are hundreds of reports available within Acumatica, but for this demo, we're just gonna look at a few examples. Let's look at the financial report writer first. The way that this type of report works is that we define the row sets, column sets, and then unit sets using accounts, subaccounts, and calculations. We then bring all of these parameters together to create the financial report. I'm going to run a profit and loss report to explain how this setup works. So if we go into the finance, we can see all of the standard finance reports listed here. I'll go into the profit and loss, and then we're going to pick a financial period where I know that I have some demonstration transactions to show. You can also see here that we're able to pick the ledger that we want to report on. So I'm going to use the actual ledger, but we may want to pick another ledger to report on instead. In Acumatica, a ledger of the actual type is the core of your company's financial records and every transaction flows through the actual ledger. The ledger of the budget type is a special ledger that is used to store budget information. An organisation can use an unlimited number of budget ledgers. A statistical ledger is a ledger that can be used to store statistical information about the branch's operations. Each organisation can have multiple statistical ledgers, each for a different type of information. Statistical ledgers can be used as a data source for reporting, to calculate allocations based on statistical data, and for some other purposes as well. A reporting ledger is a ledger that is used to store translated financial information and consolidation information. Reporting ledgers are mainly used by organisations that are subsidiaries of a parent company to hold the data translated for consolidations performed by the parent company. An organisation can use any number of reporting ledgers. Now when I click on the Run Report button, my profit and loss report will be displayed on the screen. As we've seen earlier in this demonstration, we're able to print the report out as a hard copy, email the report directly from the system, or choose to export the report in Excel or PDF format. When I'm just viewing the report on my screen, it shows some of the data in blue. This means that I'm able to drill down on it. So if we drill down on the sales revenue, we see the general ledger details that make up this balance. I can see the accounts and subaccounts here. I can then drill down again. So let's drill into this ELE000 subaccount, and now we can see the transactions that make up this subaccount's balance. If I drill down once more on the batch number, then I can get to the actual source journal and then drill down one last time to view the source document. So here we have the invoice that the posting originated from. I can go and print this invoice to the screen if I want. So you can see from the report to the source transaction, it's just a few easy clicks of the button to be able to get to. Now we can take this report one stage further and analyze by groupings such as branches. If I go back to the main report and click on the groups icon here, we've now got the option to view the report summarized by branch level. So I can see the totals for the product resale branch, all the totals for the services company, or back to my whole consolidated view for all of my companies and branches. I mentioned a few moments ago how the financial reports are made up of rows and columns. So looking at this main report structure, you can see how we've got the rows structured with groups of accounts and then calculated rows to show us our totals. 
Then we have the year to date and period to date columns that we can configure to display. We can set up all types of rows and column configurations and then mix and match them on our reports. For example, here we may want to add in a quarter to date column to go in between our year and period to date. Now let's go and take a look at the standard reports from the reports designer. This is where you can go and report on other areas within Acumatica, as well as being able to modify your invoices, modify your order acknowledgements, those kinds of things. If we go into the sales order workspace and then open up the sales order details by customer reports, we're presented with some report parameters where we can narrow down report results by dates and other items like customer and warehouse. I'm going to set my start date here back to the beginning of the year so we can see lots of data. I can then choose additional sorts and filters here. Now, if we run the report, we will be presented with all of the sales order information grouped by customer account with the quantities and values subtotaled at the end of each customer section. I've got the same functionality for the drill down here. So if I click on this reference number, I can drill down directly into the source transaction. Also, if I open up the grouping here, then I can navigate around my customers as this report is set to group by customer account. So let's go to the last customer on my groupings and you'll see the report changes to focus on that customer. If I was to run a report that is grouped in a different way, such as the sales orders by inventory item, I'll set the dates back here to give us a large range of data and then run this report. Now when I click on the grouping, you will see that it gives me the option to navigate around the report based on the actual inventory item that the sales order has on it. Now in both the financial and standard reports, you are able to create templates. So rather than having to enter the parameters every time, you can save a template and then when you go to run that report, you can choose a template that you've saved previously for future use. So if we go back to the sales order by customer report, I could go and enter some parameters such as customer alter ace and then set the warehouse as wholesale. I'll also go and extend the date ranges in here as well. I will then go and save these parameters as a template before I run the report. And in this case, I will call it alter ace sales from wholesale. Then the next time I come into this report, rather than having to add in the parameters manually, I can just select the alter a sales from wholesale template and the parameters are automatically added in for me. Lastly, we have generic inquiries. This is where we can choose tables of data to display and then apply our own filters over the top to show the exact reports that we want to see. If I open up the generic inquiry screen and then go and search on the word invoiced to open up the invoiced items inquiry. You can see here that I've got all of the setup of the inquiry where I can go and add in parameters such as conditions, groupings or sort orders and also define the results grid of the data columns that we want to see along with the styles and widths. If we now go and view the inquiry. Acumatica then shows me all of the items that have been invoiced from my given parameter ranges. I'm able to go and do all the usual things within here, such as sorting and filtering. I can also go and add my own filters as we have seen before. So let's go and add in a new class filter for customers who are classed as international. We will then save this and call it international. Then any time we come back to run this generic inquiry, we will now have the option to see all of the records and then also filter by just customers who have the class of INTL against them. The last thing I want to show you today is how we can view these generic inquiries in the format of a pivot table. From this inquiry screen, if I go into customization and choose pivot table, I then have the ability to view the data in a pivot table format. I can choose the rows, columns and values that I want to see. And then I can also choose to put a, put a filter over the top so I can easily filter the data on my pivot table. I'll drag the customer class ID into the filter section here. Now when I save and then view the pivot table, you can see that I'm presented with the data in a pivot view. And then up the top here, I've got the ability to apply filters. In this case, it's on the class ID that I dragged into the filter section on the previous screen.
So that concludes my introduction to Acumatica reporting. For a more in-depth tailored demonstration or for further information, please contact us on the phone number or the email address on the screen. Many thanks for watching.